morning. How are we doing today? Busy time of year for all of you, I'm sure. I've seen a lot of for sale signs popping up in Tilly Park. It's a good thing for you. It's sad to see the residents go, but it's encouraging to know that new ones are going to be coming in. So we're really excited about that. Um, let me go ahead and apologize. I know this is probably the first time that we've met. Um, it's my understanding that Tilly Park has done this in the past, and previous mayors have uh, uh, welcomed you into Tilly Park and have held these forums. So I just want to say thank you for your patience, and um, and again, I'm sorry that we haven't had the opportunity to meet. So on that note, nice meeting you all. Thank you. Um, I get the great honor, obviously, as mayor to talk about all the great things Tilly Park has to offer. Um, with that, it, it's in, in very important to recognize that it's not done by one person or one board, but a combination of, of multiple uh, entities or agencies. Uh, we are joined here today with many of those, and I'd just like to take a moment to recognize them for all their hard work and certainly for being part of this process. So, that being said, I know we have our three school districts here. We have Dr. Teresa Nolan from Tilly Park High School. We have uh, Principal Bob Nolting from Andrew High School. And I believe we have Dr. Scott Tingley. Are you in the room from Lincoln Way as well? Oh, there you are, Scott. Thank you. Uh, so, a lot of applause for you. Um, also, in the, the very room that we're in here, the Tilly Park Library, we have uh, Rich Wolf from the Tilly Park Library and his staff, so thank you very much for the accommodations this morning and for your participation as well, Rich, really appreciate it. We have our uh, Park District and Sean Roby and your staff, thank you very much um, for the excellent uh, quality of life that you provide to our residents and those that are coming outside of the community as well um, to enjoy the parks and all that you do. Um, so on that, we have a PowerPoint, and I typically don't go off of these, but uh, I was told that this morning I should. So it's, uh, it's in front of you here. We're going to talk about it a little bit. Um, these are things that we feel as being a critical role in what Tilly Park has to offer to uh, people that are interested in, in living in Tilly. Uh, first and foremost, our, we believe our location um, and, and the Illinois is, uh, is some of the best in, in the entire state. Um, when you look at the, the opportunity for transportation uh, with the two train stations, uh, convenient uh, conven convenience to I-80, Interstate I-57, um, these are extremely important, vital things for our community to survive. For people that are wanting to have, enjoy that suburban life, but might work in the city or in the western suburbs. So we believe the location here in Tilly Park is critical um, for your marketing purposes to people to come to bring, bring them to Tilly Park. These are great things to advertise. Uh, one thing I do like to mention here is the, two, the train stations. My predecessor, Dave Seaman, was able to secure with Metra a 30-minute um, express train from our 80th Avenue train station, which is directly outside of the, uh, the library here. Um, that's an extremely important thing that Tilly Park has to offer that not many communities can offer to residents. A uh, nice, quick train ride to the city. Tilly Park is founded on volunteerism. Um, some of our most important attributes for Tilly Park are our volunteers. Tilly Park is comprised of uh, commissions, commission-based uh, government. What that means is that there's residents, there's business owners that sit on panels. These panels are recommending bodies to the village board, village staff. They recommend various things that are going on in our community, for instance, zoning or planning. Um, a resident wants to put in a fence, they have to go to the staff, they bring it to the ZBA, the Zoning Board of Appeals, and those are comprised of volunteers. So they're a critical part of our, our government. They're critical to the spirit of what our community is. I'd also like to mention, since we're on topic of volunteerism, Tilly Park used to be a volunteer fire department. Um, one of the things that stands out when you talk about Tilly Park fire history, um, that was up until about 15, 15 years ago or so, maybe a little bit more. They were completely 100% volunteer. And that's interesting because we were a town at that time, 20,000, and we really expanded to just under 60. Now we're a paid on call. Now we have a, uh, a department that's blended. Um, they provide a great public safety network for us. But that speaks to the spirit of what Tilly Park is and the volunteerism that our residents and our business owners have for our community. They really believe in it. <clears throat> I'd be uh, remiss not to bring up the Tilly Park Chamber of Commerce. Um, as a member myself and as my business as a member, um, we find that this, this entity is uh, just, as, just as vital as our, as our village board or our village commissions. Um, they're providing services to our business community that uh, are second to none when it comes to uh, chamber of Business. Uh, they have a great partnership with the Tip Village of Tilly Park. Um, it's something that's been blossoming over the last couple of years. I know we have, so I did mention Dr. Nolan from Tilly Park High School. She's also our Chamber President, so I forgot to bring that up. I, I apologize about that, Doctor. 
but uh, we are uh, we're really pleased in a lot of things that they're doing, um, specifically with their events. Their events, they bring uh, thousands of people to Tinley Park, to our convention centers, to um, to our park district events. I mean, they're, they're really putting on some wonderful um, events for, for people to enjoy. And that's important for realtors. It's important because that's a great sales pitch for people. They should understand that they have entities and governments that are trying to work together and partner for the best interest of them, bringing a quality of life back to what we believe the South Suburban area of Chicago is, specifically Tinley Park. Uh, I did mention we have a very active business community. Um, again, commission-based government here in Tinley Park. A lot of these business owners um, sit on various commissions. We have our Economic Diver uh, Development Commercial uh, Commission that um, is comprised of residents as, as well as business owners. Uh, we have our branding committee, we have our marketing committee. These are all things that are, we have residents, but yet we have this strong uh, proponent of business owners, um, whether it be the owners, CEOs, presidents, all the way down to their, their support staff. They're, 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 they're constantly committed to um, giving back to the community that they serve and they, um, they really enjoy it. We enjoy them being a part of it. It's great having uh, the private entity side of things when it comes to public business. Uh, so we're really, uh, we're honored, we're blessed to have such an engaging business community, specifically in our downtown area. Um, but it's really throughout uh, Tilly Park. We're really proud of them. Tilly Park is known for great schools across the board. I know that's going to be talked, upon, uh, talked a little bit about later on, um, but I just want to briefly discuss it. Um, Unfortunately, I was only part of the grammar school uh, section of Tinley Park when it came to uh, my upbringing. I went on to a private school for high school. But I can speak to um, the, the quality of the leadership that these three high schools have. I mentioned their names. They are, they're great partners to work with. I could call them friends, honestly. Um, we are working together constantly to, to continue a great uh, education for our students, for our residents. Uh, but most importantly, the communication is just... That's the best thing about it. Our relationship is based upon communication. Um, whatever their requirements and needs are, the village is always there to help, and vice versa. Uh, when we ask them to be a part of this today, they were they jump at the opportunity to speak to you. And I'm going to allow them to speak uh, a little bit more in depth about what it is that you all can do to help market what these high schools do. <clears throat> Beautiful parks. Uh, I mentioned Sean Roby and Park District. Uh, we have a world class park district system. I mean, it's if you look at Chicago and their park districts and you put Tinley Park, I mean, I, yes, they have a little bit more uh, pomp and circumstance, but Tinley Park is right there um, when it comes to class, comes to what they, what they provide in services, uh, comes to the uh, facilities. I mean, they're, they're just world class. Uh, great people to work with, excellent staff, um, things that just quite simply other communities don't have. Um, fiscally conservative. Um, they, 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 they work with the pennies that they, they uh, receive out of the levy, and they work hard at it. And I, yeah, I commend them 100% for it. It's a tough job, but they do a great job at it. So really, I just, I'm, I'm here to encourage, encourage you all. Uh, Tilly Park is well, it's where I've lived my entire life. Uh, it's where I continue to want to live the rest of my life. Um, it's very important to me that we continue to see success here. These are only a couple of the bullet points of what's going on. I mean, it's just so, it's... It's unbelievable, really. I mean, from, from, if you look at what's happening in the state of Illinois, um, it doesn't speak to what's happening in Tilly Park. And uh, we are really honored to be a part of this with you. Uh, we are partners in this pro process of, of continuing to keep people here in Tinley uh, and the state of Illinois. And really, just want to make sure that you all understand that there's an open line of communication. Anything you ever need from the village of Tinley Park or its board, um, I please don't hesitate to ever ask that. We're here to, we're here to serve. So really, it's a great honor to be here with you today. Thank you very much uh, for the opportunity. And I'm going to turn it over to the professionals who really know all the, uh, the details of what we do on a daily basis, and we'll go from there. Thank you all very much, and thank you. Thank you, Mayor Vandenberg. Uh, my name is Dave Niemeyer. I'm the, the village manager uh, for Tinley Park. Uh, just a little bit about myself. I've been the village manager here for about five years, um, spent most of my life and a good part of my career in, in the south suburbs, grew up in Oak Lawn. Uh, I've also been manager in Homewood and, and Orland Hills. And um, we've had a really an exciting several years here in Tinley Park, and I'm glad we have this opportunity to really bring you up to date on not only what's going on at the village, but our parks and schools. 
Uh, what myself and, and the rest of our staff is going to do now is talk about what's important that the village is doing uh, that's hopefully going to make your job in, in, in terms of the questions you get from potential home buyers uh, that you'll have some good information uh, about what we're doing. And obviously what home buyers are concerned about, they're concerned about public safety. They're concerned about is the community investing in infrastructure? Is there development and growth going on? Is there special events? Are there exciting things planned? And so hopefully what we'll talk about over these next several minutes will give you some of that information. But I do want to encourage you, um, you know, we, we know we operate in a world and a society now that the rumor mill starts, things get on Facebook, you may hear something, you may read something. If you're ever in doubt as to what the facts are, please call any or all of us. We want to make sure that you have uh, the right information when, uh, when you're out uh, uh, selling your homes in, in, in public. So I'm going to talk really about two things. I'm going to talk a little bit about what we're doing in the public safety realm. And then I'm also going to talk about some of our infrastructure investments. So public safety, as I mentioned, uh, right up there with schools in terms of, I think, being important for people looking to relocate to a community. And our, our village board has really made an investment in this area in the last few years. Uh, probably the biggest thing that we're doing right now is we're in the process of uh, expanding our police force. We had a, a study done about two years ago that made some recommendations to increase uh, our, our police force. And over the next few years, we're, we're making investment, adding several new officers, uh, which will obviously help in terms of visibility, uh, as well as being able to uh, react to, to various uh, calls. Um, we've also made an investment, we're spending about a half million dollars on license plate recognition cameras. And these are basically cameras that are put up at key intersections in the community, which will help us um, investigate potential you know, major crimes that, that could happen. It's already been a very big asset for, for us. Um, we do, uh, one of the things that's really important in any community is, is uh, public safety outreach. And so we have some very strong programs. We have a citizen's police academy program. We get real good participation where we get a lot of our residents that come. Um, and I would encourage you too, to, to we, we have these programs. Our next one is actually um, going to be starting in, not until next January, but if you're interested, you can sign up through the uh, police department. And we also have uh, once a month uh, coffee with a cop where it's simply an hour where Anyone can go up and talk to some of our police officers, and again, that's we'd be happy to get you the schedule on that um, if that was something that was interest. Um, our crime stat information, um, we're seeing improvements in, in really all of our major areas. Uh, the uh, major crimes from uh, vehicle theft, uh, battery, uh, major crimes like that, that's all. We've seen improvement on that in, in the last several years. Um, moving over to our fire department, I think as the mayor mentioned, one of the things that we're really proud of is that we're able to maintain a, a part-time fire department that frankly does as good if not better job than, than many fire departments throughout the state of Illinois. And proof of that is in the last two years we were awarded what's called uh, an ISO 1 rating. Um, that's an insurance service uh, rating that means that number one, they're rated tops in terms of fire protection and there's also an aspect of, uh, of water in terms of having the ability to fight fires. There's only a handful of communities in the whole state of Illinois that have that. The fact that we're doing that on a part-time budget, saving our taxpayers Lots of money is really a testament to, to how well our fire department is run. Um, one of the things that we are doing is we've changed over the years. Uh, 30 years ago, we had a smaller community. Uh, it was mostly just kind of a uh, paid-on-call department. Now we have uh, firemen that live in the fire station, so we're going to have to go through a multi-year process of building new fire stations. We just Earlier this week, um, just did a, uh, a kickoff uh, uh, 
terms of a, a demolition and construction of a new station on 167th Street. <laughs> so again, big investment in terms of modernizing our, our public safety, and I think that's important for you to know. Um, obviously, the other investment that you expect us to, to focus on is certainly our infrastructure. And I will tell you, that is something that our community um, takes very seriously. Um, we spend a lot of money. Uh, this year we're spending $3.8 million on, on road improvements. Um, we're spending significant dollars on water improvements. One of the, the, uh, the major projects going on, actually not just in Tinley Park, but the whole Southwest Suburban area, is, as many of you may know, we actually get our water uh, from Oak Lawn, who gets it from Chicago. Uh, so we're part of a regional system. Well, that system for a number of years, when it was smaller, kind of operated on a, a one major line system. And uh, several years ago, recommendations were made with a number of communities out there is you need to have a redundant uh, system. And so we're in the process of working with our other communities from Oak Lawn, uh, Mokina, uh, Oak Forest, New Lenox, of actually building a redundant line and also modernizing a number of the water stations and, and uh, throughout the system. It's a, it's a really big improvement. The project is about $230 million, uh, but it's something that will, again, modernize our system um, and, and make it really one of the, uh, the most modern systems in the Chicago area. Um, we have also, I, I'm sure many of you probably read a few years ago um, about um, water meter issues in our community. Uh, we've actually are in the process now of replacing uh, almost 98% of our meters have been replaced now that we have probably the most modern meters in the community, uh, in, in basically in the Chicago area. So those two projects have been a, a big investment uh, in, in uh, <coughs> the park. Um, also very big in terms of just environmental being kind of a leading community in terms of environmental investment. Um, one of the things that we're doing is we're going through uh, an eight-year uh, process where we're, we're converting a lot of our lights to LED lighting, uh, which is obviously not only good for the environment, but saves us money in terms of electric bills. Um, our green energy, we're, we, we just received an award actually just a few weeks ago um, that essentially awarded us a, a green energy certificate and we were named uh, the number five community in percentage of green power that we actually use in, in the entire United States. And that was based on a decision the board made last year uh, to go through their uh, community aggregation process where residents now can go through uh, a system that basically allows them to, to get green power uh, for their electric uh, electric service. Um, bike pass, that's again something uh, you know related to our, our, our park system that's very important to our community. We've added a number of new bike paths, multi-use paths around the convention center recently. We're looking at this year expanding uh, our bike pass system uh, around 179th to the uh, Tinley Park uh, dog park and that's going to be something that's going to continue to be a priority for the village. So I really want to just briefly kind of up, update you on public safety and infrastructure investment. So I'm now going to turn this over to our economic development manager, Patrick Hoven, who's going to talk a, a little bit about some of our downtown and economic development efforts. So, Patrick. As Dave said, I am uh, Patrick Hoven. I'm the economic development manager for the village of Tinley Park. Uh, my role is to uh, primarily focus on the development of commercial projects. And that benefits us two ways, especially for you guys. We're trying to offset the residential taxes by increasing the commercial development, but also increasing our quality of life here in Tilly Park. Um, so Tilly Park is a great place to live. We moved here about two years ago. It was about 56 to 57,000 people in the area. Like the mayor said, awesome location, um, but tons of advantages. Uh, one of the things that I noticed right away was the uh, opportunity we have with the mental health center. We've got 280 acres with its own train station right in the middle of town. Um, we are currently in negotiations right now with the developer and working with the state um, to possibly bring in um, 800 homes that all of you can sell. Also, we've got the uh, Chicago Southland Interstate Alliance. As you'll notice along I-80, this is a really cool um, 
group effort, we've teamed up with Mokina and Orland Park to try to market all the land along I-80. Around Pando and Heads Quarters, there's quite a bit of land, so we're pushing out a marketing effort to uh, focus on that. <coughs> and our Economic Development Strategic Plan has uh, 12 initiatives, and these are the different areas that we're focusing on right now. Um, you'll see a lot of them are all in the downtown, because we've got a really nice, quaint downtown, and there's some vacant land down there that we're going to try and bring in some more residential to create density around that train station. Um, also, if we go down to uh, number six, which is on the uh, LaGrange Road side of town, um, that's uh, more vacant land, easily accessible. We've got a lot of hotels interested in that area. Um, the beauty about the hotels, it brings in um, some hotel motel tax, which can also offset some of the taxes that we have. And then we already talked about the Mental Health Center, but then the uh, number 10, the major um, rich township development. Uh, we just completed a 300,000 square foot spec building that's out there that was done by Hillwood. Uh, most people drive right by it, don't even know it's there. Um, it's right next door to a million square foot spec building. But again, these kind of commercial developments can offset the tax levy when it comes to lowering the residential property taxes. Okay, focusing more on the downtown area. Um, they had the foresight probably three, four years ago to start working on what's known as Freedom Pond out by the old Panduit. Um, that pond actually makes it um, the downtown property is eligible because there has to be uh, water reclaimed and so what we're doing is whenever you develop the downtown area we're going to send all that water out to that new Freedom Pond that's out there. So the land that we have on Central Middle School that's available, um, there's an organization that's called MWRD that if you're going to do commercial real estate development they're required to uh, retain or detain so much water and so we're using that to encourage the development. Also we've got the New Bremen TIF District which we had to reset because we had projects lined up and ready to go and then the recession hit. And as you know with TIFFs, there's a clock on those. Um, so we reset it in order to get a fresh start. And we've got uh, three projects lined up right now. Um, one of them that uh, the mayor kicked off was to fill some of the recent vacancies that we have in the downtown area due to the aged um, buildings is uh, the Oak Park Playbook. If you go up and down Oak Park Avenue, a lot of these buildings didn't have um, sprinkler systems or fire alarm systems, or um, they're a little bit dated. So this playbook was put in place in order to encourage development into those. There's also the streetscape program, because I believe that uh, beauty is a right. So, you know, Tinley's already a beautiful location. If you go down 183rd, you see all the landscaping heading right down the middle of the road. This is a way that we can down or beautify our downtown. Um, Encore Crossing is going to be a project that we're looking at in the downtown area that's going to be on Central Middle School. It's going to be 130 units with about 11,000 square foot of commercial. Um, again, right onto the north side of the train tracks. On the south side is the boulevard which is 165 <laughs> residential units with 30,000 square foot of commercial. And we are talking to restaurants right now that are interested in that. And then um, self sip self-serve wine bar, I believe broke ground last week. So you'll see a crane out there. This is going to be a place where you can go in and um, serve your own wine, and possibly take a bottle home. And that's going to be right next to our new brewery, which is called Banging Gavel Brewery. Um, we have four breweries in town. So this really goes with our 10 hotels, the convention center, and the amphitheater. Um, we're blessed that we have all this tourism to bring people around Timmy Park. And then the res residential side of things. We've got the Magnusa, which is a 144 unit residential development that's off of 183rd. And then there's also um, the former Panduit site. We are working with them on a development grant currently They're, um, to do an environmental study. And the reason that is to spur residential development on that end of town too. So there's a couple different residential opportunities that we have. Uh, some numbers that you guys might be interested in, which I'm sure you've seen before off of uh, Realtor.com, but it's like in February 2019, the median list price of homes in Tinley Park was $200,000, um, trending up 5.3% over the year, and the median listing price per square foot was 121, with the median sale price at 187. I also downloaded the top 10 neighborhoods, I'm not going to go over each one of them, but at any point, if you guys want any more information, um, I'll be hanging out and giving my card if you want to know more details on other projects besides this. I'm more than happy to talk about it. We do have quite a bit more speakers, so I'll go ahead and turn it over to our marketing director, uh, Donna Frampe, to talk about what it means to be light amplified. As Patrick mentioned, I'm Donna Frampe. I do the marketing and communications for the village. And I'm going to expand a little bit on what the mayor was talking about with regard to quality of life in Tinley Park. We are very fortunate to have two great draws in Tinley. Of course, the Hollywood Casino Amphitheater and the uh, Tinley Park Convention Center right in our community. They're both great draws to the community. Our Hollywood Casino Amphitheater is, uh, puts on about 30 to 40 high-profile shows per year. 
and they've recently just done a several billion dollar reinvestment in their facility. We also have the Tinley Park Convention Center, a very well appointed facility in town that houses many expos and conventions and uh, is currently under new ownership by an organization called the Harp Group. The Harp Group has a lot of experience in um, hospitality management and hotel development and they have a plan to change the flag of the Holiday Inn uh, that's uh, joining the convention center sometime in the next two years or so, likely to a Sheraton or something similar to that. So uh, we also have, of course, at where Patrick just mentioned the breweries that we have. We have in the Park District, the Whitewater Canyon Water Park, golf courses at uh, the golf course at Odyssey Country Club, as well as the uh, Odyssey Fun World Arcade. You're familiar, of course, with the Brookside Marketplace Shopping Center that we have at 191st and Harlem Avenue, and also uh, have 130 plus restaurants, um, and fortunately, several of them are independent restaurants, which those of us who like dining are, appreciate. And um, lodging, we have more than 1,000 hotel rooms in over 10 hotels in our community. We also have a plethora of village-sponsored special events, starting with the Irish Parade in the beginning of the year, uh, going right through all of the holidays. Uh, we're at the point right now in the season where we are putting out our benches on the avenue. Likely you're familiar, hopefully have seen those at some point in the, uh, over the last 15 years. Uh, this year we have the theme of prized page turners, and I was fortunate to see the 22 benches that we're putting out this year, and they are phenomenal. So they'll be going out on Friday if you get a chance, or if you wanted to see some pictures on our website, they'll be up shortly. We're also starting a new program, a companion program to that, called Musical Chairs. This has a little bit of an engagement component to it, whereby we are going to have the artists decorate chairs that will be placed throughout businesses in our community. And you know, a little fun um, on social media where if you find it, you can engage in a little bit of a game or something. So we're going to start with 10 chairs that you'll see scattered through various <coughs> community uh, businesses in, in town. Of course, we have our farmer's market, a very um, well-attended farmer's market, Saturday mornings in Tinley Park, down by our downtown train station. Our cruise nights on Tuesday evenings all summer long, starting in June, going right through August. We have a Music at the Plaza concert series. We have our block party, which is a big bash on the third Sunday in July, rounding out with a Halloween event and a three-day hol uh, holiday market in December. So lots of fun there. One of the things we have done about the last, about two years ago, we initiated a branding um, project. We're really trying to um, kind of figure out what the umbrella was that we need. What, what is the Tinley Park brand? What does it mean? And so we engaged in some market research. We started with visitors and, uh, of course, our own residents and businesses. And uh, very quickly, it became evident that people knew us for the Hollywood Casino Amphitheater, especially people who are outside of Tinley Park. If they had never even been to Tinley, they were at least maybe had known somebody or they themselves had been to a concert at the Music Theater. So. Um, Beyond that, we continue with the, the market research. We see, we've recognized all of the uh, intimate music venues that we have in our downtown. We have five or six uh, locations that have live music in their, in their facilities. And then, of course, do a little deeper digging and see that our schools are uh, consistently very competitive in the music arena as, as far as their competitions go and stuff. So kind of percolated to the top and realized that music is really a good, a good uh, start for us. So from that we developed the Tinley Park Life Amplified brand. Hopefully you've started to see even a little bit today in the pictures and the, the new logo that we have up there. Uh, we're having a lot of fun with it. We have a great team that's helping us lead it. So we have leadership from the uh, Tinley Park Convention Center, from the Hollywood Casino Amphitheater, some of our own businesses, the Park District, and uh, Chamber of Commerce, as well as Village employees, all working together to really develop this brand. And we know that we don't just get to put a new logo out there and say, now we're all Tinley Park, this is our brand. We, we're trying to earn it over the next couple of years, and that's, that's where our, our efforts are going right now. So uh, you will st start to see on, on our website, we have a branded website. We now have a live music calendar that you can click and see where all the live music is in town. We have, you'll start to see these branded graphics on some of our vehicles. We even recently painted a water tower that has it on there. We've got our Best of Tinley Park brochure available on our website if anybody would like to, uh, and we distribute that through our hotels. You'd see some new pole banners that have been going up, and some brand awareness posters will be showing up in our businesses. 
soon, we will be um, putting out some wayfinding signage, branded wayfinding signage. That's one of the things that our market research turned out was you know, when people get in town, we all know where everything is, but it would be helpful to have some wayfinding so people can find all of these, these locations. And then the Harmony Square, which I'll talk about in just a moment, which we're super excited about. It's our music, uh, our uh, brand promise at the bottom of the slide there. Music is in the DNA of everything we do, and that is what we're trying to um, instill with all of our, throughout our community. Okay, so I mentioned here at Harmony Square just a moment ago. This is going to be at the crown jewel, if you will, of our, our, our branding efforts. We have um, just kicked off, well, did the groundbreaking just in March, and this is going to be located just north of the downtown Tinley commuter station by 173rd and Oak Park Avenue. And um, the objective here is to make it the third place, not the place you live, not the place you work, but the place you want to hang out and have some fun. And uh, we really anticipate this being at the heart of our downtown, certainly with the development that's going on. Our goal is to uh, ramp up to 250 days of programming a year. So as I mentioned earlier, we have a good base of special events to start with. But we you know, are planning to install some great amenities here that will include a performance stage, a splash pad, a, a turf that, you know, just like kind of a quad type area just for hanging out. We'll have outdoor exercise classes there. We'll have, uh, in the winter, we'll be maximizing the use of our facility in the winter time. So we'll have an ice rink and potentially even some hockey that can be played there. So there's some renderings that we have um, put out during our groundbreaking. And we are hopeful that by the uh, winter of the 2020 season, we'll be able to start doing some ice skating out there. So it's, uh, it's something we're very excited about. And then we have made some real effort to focus on community engagement in our community. And we, um, as I mentioned, the rebranded village website, lots of information, good stuff on there. Our community email we send out weekly. We have a Tinley Park television station, so we have a, a brief uh, weekly blurb that we put out video-wise just to kind of uh, share the information of what's going on to keep people on top of things. We have our village public service announcements some community programming on, on that station as well. We are on social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. We're streaming our village board meetings, and um, we even have a transparency portal page. Still do once a year, we'll mail something out in an annual report to all of our residents. So um, always trying to make sure that we're covering all of our residents' needs and getting them the information that they need. So let me see, I think I lost, there was a slide in here, it's probably at the end, but. Um, so with that, I am going to turn this over to uh, Rich Wolf from the Tinley Park Library so we can talk a little bit about what our library does. So thank you very much. Hi, good morning. Um, welcome to the library. I'm Rich Wolf. I'm the director of the Tinley Park Library. I've been with the library for 29 years. I started in June of 90. I've been director um, for the last 12 years. So I have watched Tinley uh, grow from when I started in 92 to what it is today. Uh, the library continues, has been, and continues to be uh, a, a strong component of the village. Uh, we are a village library, so we have a unique relationship with the village. We're not a district. Um, and we have survived borders, we have survived Google, we've survived the internet, and we continue to be something that is strongly, strongly utilized and valued in, in the village. Um, this is Sarah Schroeder, she's the, my marketing and public relations manager, and she's put together a slide, a quick slide for you that she's going to talk about. Hi, thank you for joining us today, and thank you to Donna for inviting us to be a part of this. Um, here at the library, our mission is to enrich the community by providing dynamic resources, exceptional service, and reliable information, all in a comfortable, welcoming space. Um, we really pride ourselves on being a vibrant part of the community, um, hosting lots of programs, and providing these resources. Um, just to give you an idea of uh, what we have here at the library, we have over 150,000 physical items here in our library for you to either check out or use in the library. Um, we're part of a, a system called SWAN, which is, has a membership of 97 libraries, um, and that allows us to provide over 10 million items <coughs> to our community. Um, we also have over 1 million items in our digital collection, so you can check out ebooks, audiobooks uh, through our library. 
In addition, we have free access to over 50 online resources. How many of you guys knew that you could get consumer reports for free with a library card? You can, and it's fabulous. Um, we also have lynda.com, which uh, is a training resource. Uh, they have over uh, I'm sorry, 6,000 um, video courses that you can take on professional skills, whether it's technology um, or things like leadership and management skills. Uh, lynda.com is a fabulous resource. Um, we also have um, a bookmobile service that stops at 30 locations throughout Tenley Park and Orland Hills. So we were talking earlier about outreach. Um, the library is definitely engaged in those types of services. We have two meeting rooms, four study rooms, and one quiet room for study and reading. 30 public computers, uh, printing services, remote printing, so you can print uh, things from home using our website uh, or our, uh, the printer on app and then pick them up here at the library if you happen to run out of ink one day. Um, we also have media labs for creative projects and converting old media, like VHS tapes, to digital formats. Um, just, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but we do have a folder at the back of the room if you didn't pick one up, um, including an, our annual report. Uh, just gives you an idea of what happens every single day here in the library, how many people visit, how many people attend our programs, um, and we are really thankful that we can be an asset in the community. Thanks for your time. Good morning, everybody. My name is Sean Roby. I'm the executive director here for the Tinley Park Park District. Uh, we have, you know, this is what people come to you when they come to talk to you about where they want to live, some of those things. A couple of the big ones that come to mind right off the bat are always, what do we have to do and what are our schools like? We are the what you have to do. We partner with all these agencies that are here today, as you can see, as we all come out for this. Uh, we have great relationships with our villages, with the, t with the public library, with the townships. Because um, at the end of the day, the residents want us to work together whenever we can, find efficiencies where they are. Um, we add to that benefit um, the, what I call the, the fun of your life. We're the quality of your life. Where the village has some of it, we have an even larger selection of it. Um, we provide 42 parks, 32 which of those all have playgrounds. If you were to go into most of the community around here, you're not going to find a place that you couldn't walk to a park in a couple of minutes. Um, there are always going to be something for people to do. We have larger opportunities. We have a dog park that's located here in town. It was a partnership with the township and our village when we put it together. Um, we have a skate park uh, located in the heart of one of our larger parks, Centennial. Um, we also have a disc golf course located next to that. It's kind of just a something for everyone kind of community. Um, if you've noticed when you pulled up here, there's Freedom Park located right next to us. It's kind of a tournament site for us. We have, a t we have one of the first turf fields that were ever put in on the south side of Chicago. Um, hopefully as this moves forward, and Patrick mentioned earlier regarding the mental health site, there's some more synergies that we can maybe advance and develop further, this site that's sitting next to us, to really bring more people here into town uh, as a prime location for everything from a tournament site to just activities in general. We have great relationships with affiliate groups. Uh, we have Bobcats and Bulldogs, which offer programs that are a little bit more advanced than the Park District offers, but we're fortunate to have these synergies in town. Um, on top of the 42 park sites, we have seven facilities. Uh, those are specifically anchored by our, our main campus, our GEM, the, ten, the Tony Benton Housing Recreation Center. Um, this is a 120,000 square foot recreation facility, literally in the heart of town over here. Um, you've got three basketball courts, multiple rooms, rental facilities, things, there's again something for everybody and we offer a, a myriad of programs with that. Um, you know, we have a miniature golf course, uh, batting cages, we have a performing arts center, lots of just, again, it's a, a kind of a swash of everything for everyone. Um, we offer over 1,200 programs a year, some free, some paid. Uh, it's, a, it's quite the list of programs, and it ranges from seniors to youth and everything in between. Um, we're always kind of on the ongoing change, trying to find something new, something creative and fun. Uh, we continue to meet with our, our community partners to make sure that we're offering something across the board, and if we can work together, we will. Um, you know, an amazing fact that I think we just recently kind of uncovered, and I would argue it's probably a low number, but there's this bottom number that approximately half a million people come through our recreation center every year. Um, it is a, a fairly significantly large crowd and it's busy at all times. There's always something going on. Um, so as a park district, we welcome the opportunity to come in front of you. I'll be sticking around. I provided you a, a current brochure. We do three of these a year. That's uh, about 90 pages. Uh, I've also brought with me was um, 
a list of the upcoming next four months and the special events that are going on that I've since lost when I had it in the book. Um, it's in the back for you as well. My card's also back there if you have any questions or comments or things you'd like to know. I'm happy to answer that. I appreciate the time. Pleasure to seeing all of you. Good morning and thank you having, for having us this morning. I'm Scott Tingley, Superintendent of Lincoln Way District 210. Just provide a brief overview of, of the happenings at Lincoln Way. This past fall, the state of Illinois, Illinois State Board of Education, recognized all three of our high schools as being exemplary, ranked in the top 10% of all schools in the state of Illinois. It's an accomplishment we're very proud of. Just real quick, the designations are calculated through graduation rate, standardized testing, chronic absenteeism, a number of factors go into those calculations. Graduation rate for our district continues to be strong. For our district, we're at 97%. Lincoln Way East, which serves areas of Tinley Park, is at 97. SAT scores, compared to other Will County scores, we've continued to be in the top three. Uh, East continues to score significantly well on all standardized tests. In terms of tax base and funding capacity to meet expectations, Lincoln Way schools spend less per pupil than the majority of the schools that are found to be exemplary in the state. One of our initiatives over the last several years was to increase our AP student opportunities. We offer all but one current AP course. Over the past three years, you can see our total number of AP scholars, where our total enrollment has gone down. Our number of total AP scholars has grown from 400, 476 to 691 during those times. We continue to strive to provide opportunities for our students. Real quick, people always ask when I'm out, what's the enrollment look like? What's happening? As you know, we closed one of our four high schools. Our, our enrollment will continue to steadily dec decline, decrease over the next several years. As long as we are between 6,000 and 8,000 students, we are three high schools. We've now illustrated we've been able to function in three high schools very effectively and efficiently, and we will continue to do so. Also, I can't go anywhere without discussing finances. The orange on here, the orangish red is bad, the green is good. Over the past three years, we've realized operating surpluses of, of $5 million, $8 million, and then this current year will be just over $3 million. Uh, so we have stabilized the day-to-day -day finances of the district, and we are certainly moving in the right direction as we replenish our fund balances. Our year-end fund balances, as we know over time, decreased. They've stabilized and now will begin to increase. Our board has put a policy 420 in place, which, which states that 3% of all expenditures must be deposited before we even begin to budget for the year. So for us, about $3 million has to go into the bank in our budget planning on day one before we even begin. In doing so, over the next five to six years, we will replenish all of our fund balances, get completely out of the short-term borrowing. We've made significant progress on, on this goal, but this is very, very diligent in having and some foresight of, of the school board. Activities are very important. We have all IHSA sports. We have almost every activity. Football, we continue to be very strong, particularly the area that serves particularly Lincoln Way East that serves an area of Tenley Park. Uh, chair competition, uh, once again, Lincoln Way East uh, last year, cheer state championship and a uh, number of young ladies coming back next year. In terms of fine arts, our marching band participated in the Rose Bowl. Uh, we just received notification that we will be going to march in the Macy's Day Parade, not next Thanksgiving, but the following. And then you can continue to follow Lincoln Way. Thank you for having us. Hello, everybody. I'm a little bit like Mayor, and um, I'll use the microphone, but I sometimes think I can command the room without it. Um, thank you for having, for having us here today. Um, I promise to stay to the timelines. Um, if anybody, there's a lot of people that I'm familiar with here in the room, including our videographer, who is my former student and a Titan alum. Um, I, I bleed red and gold. Um, I've been involved with Tinley Park High School for, um, I'm finishing my 26th year at Tinley Park High School and my 13th as the principal. And going back even further, I was a student at Tinley Park High School. So I've been there a really long time. Um, and I couldn't be more proud. 
Um, there's a lot of different ways I could attack this, but I'm going to just throw at you some, some things that are going on now, um, things that represent Tinley Park High School, things that people who are looking to buy a home in the Tinley Park um, High School community might be interested in, and then I have a short video to share with you. Um, as I said, I've been connected to Tinley Park for a really long time, not only as a student, a resident, an employee, the principal of the high school, but um, I'm also the president of the Tinley Park Chamber of Commerce. And I will do basically anything that I need to do to make sure that people understand what an awesome opportunity people have um, to send their kids to Tinley Park High School. Our top 10 students this year, we, we have students from four different communities, um, and obviously the east side of Tinley Park being one of them. Of our top 10 students, um, six of our top 10 were from the 60477 zip code, and they will be attending colleges such as Notre Dame, Northwestern, Princeton, and the University of Illinois. Um, athletically, we have state qualifiers in wrestling. Um, 16 years in a row, we've appeared at the cheerleading um, state, state finals, um, POMS. This year, we expect girls and boys track athletes to also gain state honors. Um, Baseball and softball are having a nice competitive season as their season finishes out now. Um, band, we are talking about music. Um, our band just as of last Friday took first place in the Super State competition. Um, our band is amazing and if you haven't had an opportunity to hear them, they do uh, participate in local events and, and they are just something to, to mark on your calendar. Um, we just performed a large-scale musical, Mamma Mia, two weeks ago, um, adding to that musical nature as well. But with all of those things, and I can talk about the different clubs, full-scale athletics, full-scale activities, full-scale fine arts programs, um, there's something for everybody. We have about, we fluctuate between 1050 and 1150 students each year, and we've stayed that way since I was a student at Tinley Park High School. So our enrollment is steady across the board and has been steady for decades. Um, with that number, we probably call ourselves a Titan family because it's easy to get to know 1,000 students to 1,100 students. Um, not too many places for them to hide from, from the adults at Tinley Park High School. But first and foremost, which is probably so exciting um, for not just Tinley Park High School, but for our community, is the over $20 million that has been put into it starting last year and will culminate a year from now, um, and which includes um, upgrading of all of our athletic um, fields and, and gyms. We, are, um, we got to play on our turf football field for the first time this season. Um, we'll be opening our brand new field house this summer, which is three full-scale basketball courts, 180-meter track, an entire indoor pole vault area, a 5,000 square foot fitness center, two classrooms, a training room, um, and that's just in our athletic area. On top of that, this summer we'll be getting an entire new band room, um, family consumer science with our cooking labs. We have two, two new science labs. It just continues to get better and better. So this is a $20 million investment at Tinley Park High School alone. Um, I would like to show you the little video of the field house that will be turned over to us in June, because no matter what I say about it, pictures seem to do a little bit better of a, of a job. So this is our football field and looking at our new fitness center. This is on the back side of the building for those of you that are trying to picture it.
This will be our new athletic entrance where people will park and then enter the field house. When you, ever, when you get something new, especially when you're in a high school setting, it's definitely meant to be celebrated. This video is available on YouTube, so if you have potential home buyers that are looking and have questions about Tinley Park High School, this is available for them to see. Um, it looks a little empty right now, but obviously we'll have the summer to get all the equipment in and decorate it, and it's pretty magnificent, I, I can't lie. In addition to our, our new band room, our cafeteria, and our new fine art or uh, family consumer science cooking lab, it's going to be pretty amazing. Um, I left pens with my card in the back. Um, please know one thing, um, the, the principal Bob Knowlton who's coming up in just a second and Superintendent uh, Scott Tingley, this isn't a competition about the three schools or the three school districts. It's about, I want to make sure that when you have that client and they fall in love with the home on the east side of Tinley Park, I want you to be able to feel confident enough to tell them that I met Teresa Nolan from Tinley Park High School, and then if you have questions, here's her card. She'll sit with you personally, take you through a tour of maybe some of this new fabulous building that we have. If you have questions or comments about Tinley Park High School and would like to come and see our building, you are always 100% welcome. So thank you very much for having us here today. Not a competition. <laughs> I'm just, no, it's, it, it, you did, you did. I don't have to live by it, though, that's the thing. Um, but no, I, I appreciate you being here this morning. I have the dubious honor of anchoring this hour and ten minute presentation, but I taught economics for a few years, so I know how to engage the most boring content possible. So, um, my name is Bob Nolte. I've been at Andrew for about a decade now. Um, it is a wonderful, wonderful school. It feeds most of Tinley Park. I think we have the largest Tinley Park population of students in our, in our campus and a little bit of Orland Hills. Um, our mission statement is kind of where I want to kick off who we are. Um, we believe in our mission statement is because we have an academic, social, and emotional uh, connection to our community. Uh, and we know that we have the, uh, the, the responsibility to take awkward 14-year-old freshmen and make them into highly successful, focused, and, and future-ready 18-year-olds. And to be honest with you, I'm an expert on awkward 14-year-olds because I got one at home, and I know Teresa does as well. Um, but you also have uh, the, the real pleasure these days to walk around the hallways at all of our campuses and see what these wonderful, outstanding uh, high school graduates are going to be coming in about a couple weeks from now. Um, and it's their, their future. It, it, that, that empowerment piece is their future. A um, couple things, and I want to hit a, a, some salient points for those of you selling homes to folks who are going to be future Thunderbolts. Um, we are uh, about 2,200 students. Uh, the, the, the rumor on the street is we're still about 3,000. That hasn't been true for a good decade. So for those of you who are, who are marketing our school, if they're asking how big is Andrew High School, we are a comfortable 2,200 students. Uh, we feed all of District 140, so Kirby School District 140, all of those kids come to Andrew High School. Uh, and we share with uh, Tinley Park High School and I believe Oak Forest High School students from District 146. Again, a footnote there for those of you selling homes, that used to be students who attended Sandburg High School up until about five, six years ago. They attend our school now. Um, so if they're buying in District 146 and 230, they are Andrew Thunderbolts, not Sandburg Eagles. And then, of course, we do have a few of our local church and, and religious schools that we do get a large number of students per year from. Um, I'm going to touch on academics. I'm not going to do a highlight reel of our academics. We are ex exceptionally uh, successful academic institution. Academics is why high schools exist. We understand that. Uh, we are nationally recognized. We are locally recognized. We are recognized throughout the state 
for our academics, uh, and we're very, very proud of that. Um, we have uh, uh, just recently, uh, this past uh, weekend, uh, received yet for the, I think, 10th year or 9th year in a row, um, the U.S. Um, News and World Report, America's Best Schools designation, um, and that's a profile of our overall academic picture. So we're very, very happy. We're very accomplished in the area of academics, um, and we're very proud of that. Um, our school programs, again, you, you heard a lot about, you know, there's, there's a lot of talent in, in this area of the South Suburbs, and we get to share it. Uh, we get to compete with each other, too, with it, but we also get to share it. We, we have every athletic program offered through the Illinois High School Association, including sports like lacrosse, water polo, and girls and boys gymnastics, which you generally do not find in many communities. Uh, we also have an, an exceptional, as, as uh, Donna mentioned earlier, our, our music fine arts program is exceptional. We are one of four schools this year that was adjudicated um, to perform at Illinois Theater Fest. We have one of the best theater departments in the state of <laughs> Illinois. We also have one of the best marching band and performance band programs as well. Uh, this year we were at a national competition uh, and we uh, finished in the top uh, echelon of that as well. We are also a hub of Special Olympics and Unified Olympics and, and for those of you who have families that have children with disabilities, you really need to rest assured to let them know that Andrew High School is, 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 is recognized throughout the state for the work that we do with our special education population, particularly in this new, we are actually one of two schools who has been recognized by, by Illinois Special Olympics for our leadership in unified sports and if you've never seen a unified uh, team participate uh, it is a wonderful thing. It's literally able-bodied individual students performing side-by-side -side as teammates with Special Olympians, and it is, it is impressive. Um, and we have an exceptionally high percentage of students involved in activities, and that's one of our assets. Um, notable things, and I, was, uh, I got out of a meeting for this with our superintendent, so he said the only thing that you have to do for me is mention we are the top rated, one of the top-rated schools in Illinois for our finances. I don't know much about, I'm a building guy, they give me the money, I spend it, I don't know what goes on behind the scenes, but uh, I got out of the meeting for that, for that guarantee. Uh, we also have a support system that's nationally uh, recognized, we've been presenting throughout the country on how we support kids through uh, some peer uh, resources as well as this very innovative thing we call T-Bolt Time, which is uh, a very collegiate model on how kids can get academic and, and other assistance during the day. Uh, very green focused school. One of my favorite things to say is we got the Will County Environmental Award last year. Uh, we, we're not in Will County, so I don't know how we got that award, but Will County reached across the border and gave it to us. Um, and we have the, the pleasure of annually, I don't know, what the heck. That, maybe they don't understand where we're at. Some people think we're a Catholic school. I mean, it, it goes with the territory. Um, but, uh, but it's something that uh, uh, we also have a lot of staff recognize. And, and to sum, summarize, um, not mine, uh, summarize, uh, there's a lot of things that high schools talk about and a lot of things that I can't talk about. And the, the five minutes that I have, I want to leave you with one thing. Um, if you talk to families that are thinking about Andrew High School or moving into the community, um, we value the fact that we don't um, look at their test score before we know their names. We value the fact that we want to know their backstory, their history, who they are, before we're going to ask them where they're going to go to school after they graduate. And finally, we also want to understand what they want for their child and their future, and we're going to find a way to get them there. We're not going to tell them, this is where you should go. Um, our power at Andrew High School cannot be shared very accurately. Um, looking at an interactive school report card or looking on our own websites. It's about the stories. It's, it's the, the Jewel effect. When I go to Jewel and I see an Andrew parent or I see an Andrew graduate or I see an Andrew student and they tell me about the impact that that's had in their lives, I know that we're doing the right thing. And I'll tell you, whenever I go to Jewel, if I make the mistake of not going home to, to where I live and going to Jewel around here and I get 10,000 people that want to say something to me, Never is it something negative or a criticism or, or something wrong. It's all about how we affected them as a family, their children, and, uh, and the impact that we had on their future. So thank you all for giving me the, uh, the opportunity. Thank you.